you're back. Thank God. Uh, yeah, I've been stuck here on this island since, uh, since that Weekend at Hitler's video. YouTube thought I was a Nazi. I'm not a Nazi, I promise. I just thought it would be a funny movie, you know? Like, I want to see Hitler's head get banged around on stuff. Because he's a dead body. Like, Weekend at Bernie's. Maybe YouTube's never seen Weekend at Bernie's. So, since I've been stuck here, um, I've been thinking about movies a lot. I mean, I do that on my own anyways, so it's not new for me. But, specifically, I have been thinking about Castaway and how that movie's only good in the middle. Um, yeah, only the middle of Castaway is good. I, I don't know if, it, if you haven't seen it in a while, but it, it starts in Russia and at a FedEx building. And then it ends, like, back in America. He doesn't die on the island. Spoilers. He should have died on the island. He even thinks so. Um, yeah, but I like Castaway. Like, the, the middle part's so good. It's so entertaining. It's, like, next level Tom Hanks doing the, some of the best physical character acting ever. Um, Wilson? I mean, come on. That was inspired. Nobody's made a movie like that since then. That's kind of crazy to me. Do we just not want shipwreck movies anymore? Did Lost ruin it for us? Are we scared of shipwreck movies because of Lost? Maybe. I don't know. I think I am. Smoke monsters are stupid. So today on Movies at Shebang, I want to talk about Castaway. And, uh, yeah, so some of the best parts of Castaway are the fact that it's such a small, contained film in the middle. I want the middle of Castaway. Let's just forget about the other parts. Uh, today on Movies That Should Bang, the middle of Castaway is going to bang another movie, but let, let me get to that. So, the things that are great about Castaway is all the little character moments. There's almost no dialogue through the middle unless he's talking to Wilson, and Wilson isn't even at the beginning of it, and he doesn't talk to him that much when they skip ahead four or five years. So so really, this is this is a... This is a visual storytelling movie, and I really, really like that. There's not a lot of movies that do visual storytelling that way. And that's the aspect of Castaway that I'd really like to keep around. Not Tom Hanks, though. The other movie... This is going to sound crazy. This is going to sound... This is going to sound insane. Have you ever read the Predator comics? Um, they're pretty good, but... This is probably the nerdiest thing that you're going to hear all week. If you watch Predator 2, there's a scene where Donald or Danny Glover boards the Predator ship, and you see all these human weapons on the wall. And there's one old revolver, like single-shot pistol, like Captain Jack Sparrow's, hanging on the wall. Uh, no, nobody noticed it. And nobody knew that there was a backstory to that pistol. And that backstory was written about in the comics. And there was this, like marauder pirate dude and he had that gun and he fought a predator and I mean call me crazy but a castaway movie where some badass dude gets stranded on an island with one pistol with one shot and has to survive only to find out that the apex predator of the island is a predator set in like the 16 or 1700s this movie could be like robinson crusoe on crack and it sounds awesome to me like i know there's a new predator movie coming out and it's shane black it's probably going to be pretty good i can't imagine it's not great the idea of the film though is just a bigger predator i don't know if you've seen the trailer but it's just a bigger predator and that's kind of self-aware and I, I i feel like i can see where shane black is going to kind of go with that uh, we won't know until the film comes out. But man, how great would it be to add a movie to the Predator canon set way long ago with just one actor? I mean, that's essentially what the second half of Predator is. The first one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he barely talks. That's just him setting traps and trying to take out a Predator. And I love that idea, and that's basically what I'd like to see again. And I think changing the setting, having it start out in like, you know, the Caribbean or something and the guy you know gets shipwrecked 
uh, after they get attacked by, I guess, rival pirates or something, and he's the only survivor, uh, washes up on an island and has to fight for survival until one, one day he gets trapped. And uh, as he's escaping from the trap at the last moment, he's attacked by the predator. And now the predator has real prey. Maybe the predator is also shipwrecked. Maybe he ships down and he's trying to work on it and fix it when, uh, when this guy shows up. And so the whole movie, there's this thing called Chekhov's gun. And in film, it means if you show a gun on screen, it has to go off by the end of the movie. Whether or not it kills anybody is not super important, but the gun has to fire by the end of the movie. So if you start this film, especially if you really concentrate on the fact that he's on this island with one shot, this pistol, the whole buildup of the movie could be towards like, will he be able to use that one bullet to kill the predator? Or will he use a trap to do it? It could all be a, a setup to like fake you out and like he misses with the bullet and has to kill him a different way. I don't know. Just, I think a really small, contained, essentially two actor story about the Predator set in the 1700s. I watched the crap out of that movie, especially if you got a script writer that understands how to do like physical storytelling, uh, character through action, that kind of stuff. Uh, great examples of this are Die Hard. Think about. Bruce Willis and Die Hard. He consciously chooses to run barefoot across glass. That informs you about what kind of a person he is. He's a little unhinged, and he's trying his hardest to do the right thing. That's character through action. And you can build a really unique, uh, important, fun character. And you could even give him like a Wilson-style person to bounce ideas off of. Maybe there's like a bird or a monkey or, you know, anything really. Uh, that he can communicate with and, you know, add a little bit of levity to the dialogue of the film, you know, get some jokes in there. It could, it could be a really fun, scary thriller kind of movie. And the Predator series is primed for something like this. It wouldn't even be that expensive. Like, I think pretty confidently I could film that with the right budget and really just the Predator effects. Um, Netflix. You want to, like, slang me a couple million bucks? I'll make you a stellar streaming Predator movie. It doesn't even have to have a wide theater release. I guess, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what I want. I really want Predator to just kind of slide right into the middle of Castaway and then cut off the ends and make that a, make that a movie. Um, who could we cast in this role? I, I'd, I'd want to do somebody who's, like, a really good physical actor, I guess. In the comics, the guy was black. I just saw Sorry to Bother You, Lakeith Stanfield. He, that might be my main, he might be my main man. He, he might be my, my lead actor in this. That could be really cool. Maybe he's an escaped slave. That could be even better. Like, to get your freedom only to find that there is worse things out there in the universe that want to kill you. Man, I'm getting excited just thinking about this movie. So yeah, Castaway, Predator, let's get these two to, to doink it for me and make Predator Castaway. And that's Movies That Should Bang. Hey, so thanks for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed this content, uh, please, pretty please, with sugar on top, subscribe. Um, we would love to continue doing this, and it's your support that helps us to keep going. Um, if you hit that notification button, you'll see every week when I put out a new Movies That Should Bang. Uh, we also have Movies That Should Bang quickies and um, skateboarding reviews, skateboarding movie reviews. It's a little confusing. We talk about movies while we skateboard on Instagram TV. Uh, that's at Montressor Media. That's also our Twitter handle if you want to get a hold of me or Devin, who does the other videos on this channel. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter there. We will talk to you for sure. We love to talk about movies. We have a podcast called Film Rescue that's kind of available everywhere. We also have a Patreon, Montressor Media. Uh, we don't monetize these videos. I can't. The trailers in the background make it illegal. Uh, we would love to do this for a living so someday. That's like, that's my dream, just being honest. I would love to do this for a living and have better shows and have uh, an office and a studio to do this kind of stuff. We've got a bunch of ideas, but we both work full time. So if you could help us out on Patreon, even just a couple bucks a month, we'll get you access to all of our behind the scenes footage. Um, 
uh, basically any jokes that get cut, you'll get to see the, the uncut versions of movies that should bang, uh, our Twitch live streams, our Twitch movie nights. Uh, uh, we have a special second podcast that's only available on Patreon called Aftercast, where we kind of chat about movies and topics as they're brought up to us while we're on live. Um, you only get access to that and our Discord through the Patreon. So if you would like, please uh, please hit us up on there. Um, if you have an idea for movies that should bang and you want some serious YouTube clout, and by serious I mean the other eight subscribers on this channel right now as this movie is being made, um, drop a comment. If I use your idea, I will shout you out in the video uh, and let you know on Twitter as well if I uh, used your idea for a movies that should bang. Let's make movies bang together. That's my motto. Thanks for watching. Are you looking for new ones?